Hello and welcome to your 30th Java tutorial. Today we're going to look at the difference between primitive variables and reference variables. And we've been doing these all along in the previous tutorials. I just didn't explain the difference because we really didn't have a good understanding of what objects are. But by now we all should know what objects are because we've been dealing with them and talking about them in the last 10 or 15 tutorials. Now if we go up here, I've written out the three types of variable names that we've called this. Yes, it's a primitive variable and we'll get to that in a minute. We've also called this an instance variable and we've called this an object variable. An instance variable because we get a new instance of this variable when we create our object and an object variable because it's part of that object, right? The object that gets created. Now we're going to deal with primitive variables. So we don't really care about these two names anymore. We're just going to get rid of those. We're going to deal with a primitive variable. A primitive variable is simply one of those data types that we always use. Like we use an int or a double and we give it a specific value. That's a primitive variable. So you know, remember there was double, int, uh, a long float where we assign this a simple value, in this case 20. Or in this case of the decimal we give it a 5.5. Now what about objects though? Because yes, when we create a new object, we're actually creating a variable here, right? This is a variable. Even though we actually call this our object, it's actually a variable because we're using this equal. We're assigning what gets built by this constructor to this name. And the actual long name of this is it's called an object reference variable. And you might be like, wow, what does that mean? Well, it means, yes, that it's related to this object, but it's not actually the object. It represents a way to get to the specific instance of that object. But keep in mind, we could have several different instances of this. Remember, we could create multiple objects of this, and this just tells us which instance to go to. So keep that in mind. I like to think of it kind of like a, uh, a street sign. I kind of like to use that as the analogy. So think of it like the street sign is not the actual road that you drive in, right? It's just telling you that that's the road that you're on, but it's not the actual road. Well, it's the same thing for objects. This isn't the actual object. It just represents a way to get to a specific instance of that object. So we're not actually going to run this code, but let's just say we did run it and we get our object over here on the right. And there it is. It's just a road object. And so it got constructed here. And then this name now basically associates it with this object that's in memory, right? Remember, the object gets put into a memory and the actual memory is called the heap. So that's where the physical object is. And this is just a name that's pointing and telling you that this is the actual object. Now, where I live, some, you know, a road will run through different towns. And each town might actually call that road a different name, even though it's the same road. So we could come down here and create a new object reference variable and not have to use the constructor, right? We already constructed it up here, but we just want to create a new reference to it. So we would just come down here and use our road class and call this Maple Road and put mile 15. And so we, all we did was say, hey, Maple Road's value, its reference value, equals what mile 15's was. It goes to this object over here. And that's why I put this up here, actually. I mean, remember we did this in earlier tutorials. We're just saying the same thing, you know, the same thing with this primitive variable. Y equals X's value, which is 20. So again, this is an instance of our road object, and this is referring to this instance of that road object. Now let's say we want another road object. Well, we know how to do that. We come here and say road, and this is going to be Smith Road, and we're going to say this equals, and now we're going to invoke a new object of the road class. And so the constructor will get invoked. It'll go build a new object of this road and it'll place it down here. And this is a new instance of the road. So it's another road object. So it's allocated its own memory in the heap. So this reference object variable refers to this instance of the road object. Because we could have a dozen or a hundred road objects, how would we know which one is which? Well, that's the way it's done. And it's the same thing with streets, by the way. If they didn't have names, how would you know which street to go to? We'd never know. So it's the same concept. Now, you don't have to get too caught up in these idiosyncrasies. Some people just like to think of this, hey, that's my object. I'm creating my object now. You know, I'm not going to call this an object reference variable. I just think of this whole thing as my object. And to go back to the street analogy for a second, it's kind of the same idea. Uh, idea, right? You know, if someone called me up and said, hey, can you meet me on Main Street? I don't think I'd say, hey, you know, that word you just used, Main Street, that really isn't the road. That just is a reference to the road, but it's not the actual road. Well, you see, you see where I'm getting here. So anyways, uh, I hope this helped explain the difference between a primitive variable and an object reference variable. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial.